Hello and welcome to The Conversation, the new central television. This is a program where we bring you up to speed with all the political happenings on the African continent. I am Benga Borowa. And I am Rita Omodia, definitely keeping you up to speed on all the political stories around the African continent, as of course election is around the corner in Nigeria. And that's where our focus will be on today's edition of The Conversation, where we will be discussing, first of all, the clamped down opposition rallies in Zimbabwe, especially a recent ban on rallies of the major opposition party in the country. Meanwhile, the situation is not different in Nigeria as there has been a series of attacks on opposition parties, especially the Labour Party, during its rally in Lagos, a state that is largely dominated by supporters of the country's ruling party. Um, Rita, interesting take. As we get closer to elections day, to election day, I wonder why elections in Africa seem to be a do or die affair. It's a civic exercise. Respect people's choices. I mean, that question has been going on for a lot of Nigerians, mm. a lot of Africans. Uh, why the ruling party always has to, accordingly, allegedly, because yeah. uh, according to the Labour Party right now, according to speculation, they, they say, okay, it's the ruling party. Yes, yeah, supporters of the ruling party, but there is still no verification of who exactly these so-called unknown gunmen, mm. thugs or hoodlums were. But one fact we know is that people were harassed going for the mm. Labour Party rally. And it's not a good look for our democracy. We need Definitely to do not. better. But let's begin in Zimbabwe where the opposition party, the Citizens Coalition for Change, CCC, has expressed its discontent over the recent ban on four of the planned rallies by Zimbabwe's Republic Police. The ban was implemented due to either a lack of necessary information or non-compliance with the controversial Maintenance of Peace and Order Act, MOPA. The CCC has not been able to hold a rally since last year's campaign period, and past rallies have resulted in violent incidents. In response to the ban, the opposition party spokesperson, Fadzayat Makhere, issued a strong statement accusing the ruling ZANU-PF of abusing state institutions and revealing their insecurity ahead of the upcoming elections of the country. Now, the CCC, that is the Triple C and ZANU PF, are considered the front runners for the available seats in the elections, which are expected to take place this year. Meanwhile, President Embassy Nangagwa has announced that ZANU PF should prepare for an influx of support from member opposition parties. The party has recently welcomed a number of high profile individuals, including former parliament members who have joined the party. This shift in support could potentially impact the outcome of the upcoming elections. And now, joining us for this conversation, we have Ostalo Ziba, CCC. National Deputy Spokesperson and Sidix Muradzikwa, a political analyst from Zimbabwe. We also have Dr. Urayayi Zembe, President of the Democratic Party, all joining us from Arari, Zimbabwe. Gentlemen, welcome to the conversation. I'm going to begin with Dr. Zembe. Now, we're looking at all the allegations and what is going on, especially the recent ban on four rallies planned by the Citizens Coalition for Change, CCC, in Zimbabwe. Can you tell us, Dr. Zembe, I mean, you are in Zimbabwe, what exactly is the reason behind Nelson Chamisa's, uh, what exactly is the reason behind uh, Nelson Chamisa referring to the ban as lawfare? Can you give us uh, what exactly this recent ban is about and why Nelson has termed it as a lawfare? Well, again, as we have repeatedly said, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Go on, please. As we have repeatedly said, the same on this platform, that uh, the, there is violence uh, in Zimbabwe, which is institutionalized in uh, institutions of governance in the country. And this is not new. Right from Rhodesia, opposition politics was banned by an act of parliament called LOMA, Law and Order Maintenance Act. And after independence, during Mugabe's time, there was the POSA, Public Order and Security Act, which used, which was used to ban activities of opposition parties. Now we have MOPA, as Gibenga had just said, which is being used to ban activities of competing opposition parties, which means that the 
we, uh, we can't talk of a democratic election in Zimbabwe. We have gone past that uh, definition. What we are having is actually an electoral struggle, which is a people's right to struggle for appointment of legitimate government through elections. So forget about free and fair election in Zimbabwe in the next six months. Zimbabweans know, and they have long defined, that they have to struggle for democracy against a violent uh, state which is abusing the police to ban activities of opposition political parties. That is why Advocate Chamisa, president of CCC, has long said it is lawfare. It's the law being abused to ban activities of competing opposition political movements. So there isn't any democracy to talk about. We are, we are struggling to install a democratic order in Zimbabwe. And uh, this has taken long, 43 years after independence. We are still struggling to establish a constitutional democratic state. Let me pause here. Thank you, uh, Dr. Zembe. I'd like to bring in Ostana, who's the deputy uh, spokesperson uh, for the opposition CCC party. Now, Ostalos, the Zimbabwe Republic Party cited either a lack of required information or non-compliance with the Maintenance of Peace and Order Act, MOPA, as the reason for the ban on these CCC rallies. Can you elaborate on what specific information was missing and what aspects of MOPA, the CCC, failed to comply with? And are you satisfied with the criteria that was used in making this decision? Uh, thank you very much. Look, uh, first and foremost, uh, the effects on the ground is that there is criminal abuse of, um, you know, the law in this country and the weaponization of the same to target those who differ with the state. Nangawa has declared a de facto one-party state, and uh, this is what we see. I'll give an example. One of the reasons for banning our rally citing that we have not complied with MOPA is actually uh, not true because when they give us reasons, one of them is that we don't have manpower to come and man your rally. But when we go ahead with the same rally, you will see the same manpower coming to disrupt the rally. We have had our rallies disrupted by the police. We have had our rallies disrupted by ZANPF, well-known hooligans and members within the rank and file of ZANPF. So what you see is criminal abuse of power. What you see is official effect of banning of opposition by using uh, you know, the legislative uh, law that is called MOPA, which is contrary to the provisions of the uh, Constitution, because MOPA is ultra bias the fundamental freedoms in the Bill of Rights, particularly the right and freedom uh, to assemble. All right, thank you so much, Stalas. I'd like to bring in Siddiq into all of this. Siddiq, you're a political analyst, and I'm sure you've been aware of uh, the political climate going on in Zimbabwe for a very long time. And the CCC came up last year, and now we're seeing that the reason for this ban on the activity is because they have failed to comply with, comply rather with the requirements of MOPA. And meanwhile, CCC, just like you rightly said, has said that this is a criminal abuse of power. Uh, what is your own assessment of what is going on right now in Zimbabwe? Do you really think that the CCC has violated the requirements of MOPA? Or are you also of the opinion that this is an abuse of power by the ruling government? Well, uh, <clears throat> first of all, uh, we have to uh, remember that uh, CCC does not uh, exist in a vacuum. It is also a political party uh, which has got the same rights in the political space of our country. Uh, similar to ZANU-PF, similar to any other political uh, party or a political outfit in our country. But uh, the question is uh, why the CCC uh, rallies, or the CCC is only the party which is said to have failed to meet um, the requirements in terms of um, uh, notifying the police, in terms of registering their intention to, to conduct uh, their political uh, rallies and other uh, political uh, associations. So uh, you you realize that um, ZANU-PF has been using uh, 
law face strategies, strategies against uh, dissenting voices, not only the CCC in our country, but previously um, uh, we have uh, witnessed a situation whereby any political uh, um, uh, outfit, political activities uh, which are not uh, in line with uh, the dictates of the state are being um, uh, crushed uh, at inception. So uh, we have witnessed a situation whereby uh, the CCC is continuously uh, said to have failed to meet uh, the dictates of the law, but in actual fact, we all know that, and it is uh, clear. More, it, it is clear that um, uh, this uh, uh, regime is trying, by all means, to avoid and to prevent uh, the, the citizen coalition for change to hold its its rallies. So this uh, typifies and epitomizes a flagrant breaches of uh, the citizen rights uh, and uh, the rights to uh, political association, and so. Uh, there is no way um, a citizen a coalition for change, which is a part led by um, a, a several uh, clever and uh, intellectually gifted uh, lawyers, political uh, analysts. They have also um, engaged uh, the authorities in terms of registering their intentions. But on numerous attempts, as I have alluded to, they are being uh, avoid. They, they, they are not being allowed to uh, hold these letters. So. This uh, typifies um, uh, the, the regime uh, strategies of using lawfare and other uh, strategies to try to uh, prevent and dissuade the masses from attending citizen coalition for change uh, political rallies. So this is uh, uh, actually um, uh, some, something which is not above the law. Uh, thank you uh, very much, Sirix. And uh, next time we hope to have a ZANU PF uh, person here to you know balance out the conversation now uh, dr zembe ccc national spokesperson fat zai mahere in a reaction to the band rally said and i quote zanu pf can never win a free and fair election in zimbabwe hence the resort to the usual dirty tricks of political violence weaponizing the law against opponents banning our gatherings criminalizing dissent and enacting draconian laws to try and destroy the opposition it will not work. End of quote. Uh, Dr. Zembe, how does this statement reflect the current political situation in Zimbabwe? And uh, what are the implications for the future? Okay, um, Dr. Zembe, we lost connection with Dr. Zembe. So I'd like to uh, direct that question to Ostalos. Uh, your colleague uh, did make this statement uh, less than 24 hours ago. How does this statement reflect... Uh, the current political situation in Zimbabwe. Yeah, thank you very much. That's a quite a clear, you know, uh, analysis of the situation on the ground because the state has stand against its own citizens. Zimbabwe is now a de facto one-party state, and it's not only Triple C that is under attack. The state has gone after lawyers. You know that Colonel Job Sitala, who's also a member of parliament was actually arrested on line of duty representing one of the victims of political violence was actually brutally murdered uh, in Chungiza, a dormitory town outside Harare. Um, also, they've gone after journalists, you know, the case of Wopo who has been exposed in corruption, and the state has gone after him. Um, you know that also, you know, the state has gone after, you know, journalists who yeah, are covering political work, you know, and so forth. So it's a situation where Zan is scared of an election. It is scared because the stuff is that have been done by credible research institutions like McCoy, uh, proving beyond any scientific doubt that if the election is going to be held uh, any time from tomorrow, Nagao is going to lose the election. And also, of course, there were also surveys done by the government of Zimbabwe through its security arms. That also point to the same, a democratic breakthrough and a victory for the progressive forces in this country. And because of that, that's why you see Zambia unleashing violence. That's why you see them using fear as a tool of mobilization and also trying to ban the alternative so that you don't have a, 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 you know, space to come in. So this is the danger of the Mnangakwas regime. It's the carefree and the indifferent government that has no regard of the law. In Zimbabwe, it's an animal farm kingdom. There is a law for Zanpef, law for the rest of us. So that is the current predicament that we're facing. If you see the fight against corruption, 
is the fight directed towards those who differ with the state and not necessarily those who are extracting parasitically so the economy of our country. Okay, now I'd like to bring in Dr. Zembe into all of this. While we're trying to understand the legality of all the actions and the banning of rallies, now President Emerson Mangagwa mentioned a statement that there will be a large support uh, for the ZANU PF from opposition members. So, first of all, who are these opposition members that Emerson Mangagwa is indicating that will support the ZANU PF and what impact will it have on the political landscape in Zimbabwe? Uh, I would like to bring in Sidix into all of this while we still try to get in Dr. Zemba. So, Sidix, you have the floor, please. Okay. Um, first of all, what we have to understand uh, in terms of uh, the political um, uh, landscape in Zimbabwe is that um, uh, since time immemorial, or was, uh, the post-independent politics uh, of Zimbabwe it presents um, uh, the political parties whereby... Um, uh, ZANU-PF was never contested See, uh, up until uh, the formation of the MDC in 1999, whereby um, uh, Morgan, Dr. Morgan uh formed the MDC, gave uh, the new life into uh, in terms of opposing politics of our country. So since then, uh, ZANU-PF has been challenged uh, from its foot uh, from its foot uh, by uh, opposing po uh, po po political parties, but. Uh, uh, See, since uh, uh, the period uh, beyond uh, 2013 elections, we saw uh, uh, many political parties, particularly the opposition, uh, being infiltrated by um, uh, the agents of the regime. So uh, we, we, uh, that period, we witnessed a lot of um, uh, political members, senior political members of the opposition, uh, being um, uh, aligned to uh, certain uh, political parties uh, and and mostly to uh, aligning themselves to the dictates of um, of the regime. So uh, it is actually true uh, for um, uh, President Mangagwa to uh, actually state unequivocally that um, uh, some political uh, uh, some opposing political figures will actually uh, support the ZANU-PF in 2018. Why? Because those political uh, uh, players, which have no relevance in terms of uh, giving a, a stiffer competition in terms of uh, the election in Zimbabwe, mm -hmm. they do benefit a lot when ZANU-PF is at the helm of politics in Zimbabwe. They don't benefit a lot uh, in terms of uh, the participation of citizen coalition for, for change. That's why, uh, evidently, we witnessed... Um, a, so many uh, political outfits uh, 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 in terms of opposition uh, flocking to uh, the dialogue, the political di dialogue, uh, which is uh, termed uh, polar in Zimbabwe, which is uh, convened by uh, President Mangawa himself. So there are a lot of uh, monetary benefits. They do get uh, 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 funding, number one. They do get uh, protection, immunity from law. They do get uh, money uh, uh, in form of uh, brown envelopes from uh, the government and from the regime. That's why uh, uh, Nangagwa is uh, clearly uh, stating that uh, some form of uh, po 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 political opposition, none other than uh, uh, CCC, which is prepared to uh, form alternative government in Zimbabwe, will be able to support uh, uh, the ZANU-PF bids in terms of winning this election. And it's, it's actually true. That's why we have uh, seen uh, other political um, leaders of opposition which are, are of no relevance in Zimbabwe, like the one which is led by um, uh, Professor Lav Momaduku and the likes, uh, Douglas Monzora and, and the Cabal and the, the rest of the court of uh, political opposition, which does not have offer much in terms of substance to political contestation in Zimbabwe. They do support the government because of uh, the benefits they uh, get in terms of okay. uh, uh, pre-election, during the election, and post-election. That's why uh, Munangagwa is actually uh, uh, confident that you uh, are must support from uh, uh, these uh, political outfits. Thank you, Sidix. Now, still staying on the subject of uh, these defections uh, from opposition parties to the ruling ZANU-PF, uh, Ostalo, Sidix seems to see that there are pecuniary motivations for these individuals. Now, uh, Astalos, can you provide uh, more insight into some of the key former members of opposition who recently joined uh, ZANU-PF, such as Tongai Matutu 
and Collins Changiro, who was the who is the brother of the late MDC leader Mongo Changiro, and blesses Chibundo. How much of a heavyweight are these individuals? What led them to join Zana PF, and what impact do you anticipate this will have on the upcoming elections in Zimbabwe? No, uh, thank you very much. Uh, look, uh, this. Uh, um Individuals, we only hear them when Zanu, uh, you know, uh, tells us that uh, they are prominent when they join Zanu because uh, prominence is a product of mass appeal and obviously the confirmation by ordinary people. Yeah, but I what about we'll an individual that, like Collins Changirai? Look, uh, it's only that uh, he's abusing the name of Dr. Muki Richard Changirai, unfortunately. Someone who died fighting for democracy in our country. Collins was never a member of the opposition politics during Morgan Chagra's time. He was never a relevant political figure, uh, even during and after uh, Dr. Morgan Chagra's politics. He's just someone who belongs to family and a young brother uh, to Dr. Chagra and no one in the politics of this country. I mean, you can travel anywhere and ask any Zimbabweans about these individuals. You only hear them. We only used to meet them when we go maybe to visit the residence of the then president of the democratic movement then. Um, and, and these are not prominent figures uh, to say the genuine scientific fact. But what you see is that um, ZANU is aware that the democratic struggle has been a difficult struggle. And in all the time, it tries to throw trinkets and trappings of dictatorship. That doesn't relay us anyway, because this is the citizen's project. And what it requires, it requires people authentic and genuine to prosecute the struggle without fear or favor. We were invited by Mr. Nahoga to join the gravy train in Poland. One of the promises then was that Chamista will give you bodyguards, will give you motorcade and sirens. We said, look, we are not in politics for positions. We are there for propositions to change the common lives of ordinary people so that we realize, you know, uh, the dream for a better Zimbabwe. So we are not motivated by money. We are not motivated by position. They actually even extended their hands to say, you come and join and become the leader of the opposition in parliament. So that again, we said, look, this is not within the confines of the constitution. And we can't go there at the benevolence of the winner. Okay. It's criminal abuse of power. All right, Ostalas, I want to really take this question before we wrap things up. Now, now it seems like uh, the party is a bit tied up. I mean, you talk about the police being usurped by the executive as a ban on rallies. What is the next step for the CCC? Are you going to continue with rallies in Zimbabwe? What is your next step now? I think that our program of action is informed by the following. Number one, we are going to be engaging the Commissioner General of the Police so that it becomes clear uh, in the pre-election environment that where does the police stand because we don't think that we can continue this criminal abuse of power by uh, the police. So we think that the first thing is to engage the Commissioner General, which we are going to be doing this week, and making sure that we present the evidence before the Commissioner General as to why our rallies are being banned. The second thing is obviously to rethink our organizing and mobilization programming. We have done that and that's what we're going to be escalating so that we reach out to the people because we think that there is no alternative to continuously mobilize our people. The third thing is obviously going to be in and around making sure that we engage our regional and continental and international partners on the dangers of this kind okay. of free election environment where we are having an election without democracy. We have said to Zan, why invite us in an election when you don't want competition? You must just say we no longer have elections in Zimbabwe because we think that South Africa in particular can be able to assist us in Zimbabwe and SADC and African Union so that we are able to resolve okay. these kind of issues because they, they recommended Thank them in their report in the last election. Thank you, Stalos. I'd like Cidix to have the last say, and if you can, in less than a minute, I would appreciate. Now, your final thoughts. Uh, what do you see as the key factors that will determine the outcome of the upcoming elections in Zimbabwe? And what's your prediction for the future of the country's political landscape? Do you think things would improve uh, before we approach election day? Well, uh, in terms of uh, the political prognosis, uh, which I can offer in terms of uh, the uh, uh, the election which are coming in our country is that there is a, a need for um, a, a, a political uh, tolerance, political understanding 
uh, across the political divide, all the political parties, particularly those who are at the helm of decision making and a control of the state institutions and state apparatus, they need to uh, confirm to the uh, democratic dictates of 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 holding elections, which uh, 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 prescribes uh, in the tenets of democracy, of holding uh, free and fair elections, uh, devoid of uh, uh, political shenanigans of uh, trying to thwart uh, dissenting vo voices. So uh, I, I, I appeal to uh, those who uh, control particularly the ruling party uh, to uh, give in and accede to the democratic uh, cause and the cause for reforms, uh, cause for um, engaging into um, free and fair uh, dialogues in terms of uh, trying to uh, find uh, amenable solutions to uh, world or that or, 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 or ways which can lead to um, okay. a de democratic uh, 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 elections and uh, credible um, outcomes. So that is uh, actually uh, what I, I I implore the those who are in, in, in control to uh, at least listen to the uh, mm. uh, for Thank reforms you. which are needed in our country. Thank you very much, uh, Sidix Muradzikwa, a political analyst, and also Stanis Ziba. CCC National uh, Deputy Spokesperson. We also would like to say thank you to Dr. Uriyayi uh, Zembe. We lost his connection earlier. Thanks for your time and insight. Thank you.